Hello and welcome to episode 36 of AFC Filed Still We Rise. This is my first YouTube series here on Football Manager 2020 and we've made it to Saturday the 3rd of October. It's a big game. It's filed against Salford City, our old playoff final opponents from uh, two years ago in the game. Uh, both are now firmly entrenched into Skybet League 2. Uh, of course, Salford owned by the class of 92 and uh, Valencia's owner, uh, Peter Lim, uh, as well. Last time out, uh, you may recall, uh, hopefully you were with us, uh, we crashed to defeat against Bradford City, uh, thanks to a Connor Wood hat-trick. Uh, that was our second loss in succession, as prior to that, we'd also tasted defeat in the Leasing.com trophy against Grimsby. The good news is that since then, we have played four fixtures, uh, and we've won them all, amazingly. Uh, there seems to be, uh, even the players seem to react uh, when the cameras aren't on which is uh, an unknown, uh, unexpected. Uh, first, we won against Carlisle. Now, this was a comeback win at Brunton Park because we went down to a Virgil Gomez penalty uh, before we had to rely on Tom Walker to equalise. Tyrese Francois for Carlisle uh, then put them back in front before Whitmore uh, levelled the matters it was Jack Muldoon, a late winning goal uh, that earned us all three points uh, and the, uh, set the 200 away filed fans uh, into raptures. We then welcomed Stevage to Mill Farm uh, and we pretty much dominated the first half, raced into a three goal lead uh, thanks to Walker, Jan Songo, uh, our new signing uh, defender from Scunthorpe and striker Jamie Proctor. We did sort of take our foot off the gas in the second half and that allowed Simeon Jackson to claw one back for Stevenage, but we were always very comfortable. Second home game in succession, it was Leighton Orient. Really tight this one. Narrow win for us, uh, thanks to Jovan Malcolm's uh, early goal inside the, uh, the opening 10 minutes. Uh, Jovan is back with us on loan for a second season in succession from West Bromwich Albion. Uh, we then headed over to Plough Lane to play AFC Wimbledon uh, and we were comfortable winners uh, in truth. Um, we were two goals up before Callum Riley uh, got a penalty back for uh, the Dons, uh, however a second by Scott Duxbury and a late one by Danny Phyllis Kirk just sort of put the uh, cherry on the parfait uh, as they say. Bit of a concern that we've conceded two penalties in those uh, four games, but uh, on the whole, uh, we've done really well. And that has left us in the league. Uh, it's left us a second uh, on the ladder. We are just behind Bolton Wanderers, who are on a great run uh, under Keith Hill. They've won their last five, and just above Bradford City. Uh, who are my tip for promotion as well. So I think both Bolton and Bradford will go up and it's all about who gets that third spot. Currently it's us with a four point advantage over the likes of Crawley and Grimsby, but there's so much to go. You know, everybody knows the if you're in the Championship, League One, Two, even the National League, it is a long, hard slog of a season. Barnet, I always look at because uh, we came up with them Barnet are down in the lower reaches. They are 21st with just two wins uh, to their name in the league this season. In injury news, Kyle Jameson uh, suffered a hernia during a weight session uh, at the gym uh, at Mill Farm. Uh, so he'll be out for up to six weeks. As we've just crossed over uh, at the end of the month, September's Manager of the Month award went to Keith Hill. Deservedly so, uh, Bolton Wanderers boss with his five wins uh, during the month. Uh, myself, second place uh, in front of George Boateng, but only just narrowly. Uh, we sort of shot ourselves in the foot with the Player of the Month award because it went to Connor Wood, uh, Bradford's uh, winger, who of course got his hat-trick against ourselves. Uh, so in five appearances, he scored three goals, 
those three goals. Uh, Tom Walker, our own midfielder, uh, took second place behind him, despite a better average rating, it has to be said. Uh, and Joe Garner in third place. I mean, he got more goals than Connor Wood. So it seems as though he, uh, the Bradford winger is dining out on that one performance. Today's game is against Salford City. Now, they beat Stevenage in their last game, uh, thanks to goals uh, including from ex-Manchester United striker James Wilson and Adam Rooney uh, was on the score sheet. So he's certainly somebody that we're going to have to uh, look out for in this game. In terms of our lineup, it's pretty much the settled one now. The only big difference at the moment is that Jovan Malcolm has definitely earned his start on the left. Uh, he's been playing well from there. So he takes the place of Jordan Williams, who's currently rested. Matty Kozolo uh, isn't quite fully match fit. Uh, his sharpness is a bit down. So expect him to come off during the game. Uh, and he's somebody that we're going to look to build up the fitness of with a few games. One of the frustrations at the moment is that all of our under-23 and under-18 games seem to happen on the same day as the senior team. So you have to be very careful about who's available and who's not. Uh, the uh, game likely to re uh, remind me there about Kozolo's uh, level of fitness. Um, you have to sort of place players out of the squad and make sure that they're not involved at all so that they can go and play for the under-18s or the under-23s and get a full 90 minutes uh, under their belt, uh, which is what they sort of need to kind of build that fitness and that match sharpness back up. You will have noted noted also on the home screen, uh, the chairman, David Haythornthwaite, is extremely happy with the finances involved in signing Jan Songo. Uh, an eye for a bargain has uh, David Haythornthwaite, and hopefully that's what Songo proves to be. Uh, as discussed, um, it's actually going to be quite a similar formation to ours. Uh, Davis and Andrade will play a little bit further forward than the graphic suggests on screen. And then they've got their three in the middle, just like we do. Adam Rooney is their striker. Uh, but Wilson uh, is on the bench, the, uh, one of the goal scorers uh, in their last game against Stevenage. Bruno Andrade on the right wing is certainly somebody uh, to look out for. Uh, I think he's a really good player. Uh, we never really do anything significant in our pre-match team talk, so I'm going to let Kenny take that one. Uh, ah, well played, Ken. Uh, I have to say, eight players, uh, all motivated by his words. All right, I'll give credit where it's due. And uh, we're going to go uh, straight into the game here. Uh, just as we get underway, really interesting news uh, regarding Football Manager 2021. Uh, there was a bit of a post uh, on the uh, Sports Interactive website uh, retweeted by the um, FM account there on Twitter uh, regarding the upcoming game, which sort of uh, confirmed it uh, and uh, set out a bit of a, a bit of an explanation as to the impact that COVID-19 uh, and the uh, coronavirus pandemic has had on the game and its production. Uh, goal for Joanne Malcolm there, uh, assist by Luke Burke. Great news to have, uh, you know, Football Manager 21 pretty much confirmed there. Um, so that's going to mean that it, it's probably going to be a little bit later out and thus we have a bit more time to uh, develop this series with AFC Filed. Uh, you'll also notice that on the uh, Football Manager website this week, on the byline, uh, a certain Charlie Tango uh, submitted uh, an article about corners. Uh, so if you follow the series uh, and one of the big sort of uh, events of the uh, of the entire kind of campaign uh, was that certainly last season we scored some like 27 corner goals um, with AFC filed. So uh, I thought it was a good idea to just share my approach, not necessarily the specifics of the uh, of the corner um, routines, but just setting one up and the importance of really sort of doing your homework and uh, having a look at who your best players are to, to put in the uh, important positions, you know, especially where you're going to direct the, uh, the ball to. 
Speaking of Football Manager 21, uh, my role obviously as assistant researcher for AFC Fylde will continue. A lot of moves being made at the moment with Fylde players. Dan Bradley is at Alfreton uh, now following his release. Uh, Ryan Crowsdale is rumoured to be about to sign for Barrow. Um, if, uh, if various uh, media sources are to be believed. Uh, and uh, there is a goal for Jan Songo, just as we were talking about uh, how good we were at corners. Uh, his second of the season, assist by Tom Walker. Basically, uh, the right player in the right position. Doesn't happen by accident. If uh, you got to put the work in there. Uh, but as I was saying, my, my role as an assistant researcher for AFC Filed. If anybody does want to contact me about that, I would chat about um, how to find out which uh, clubs are available to research, what the benefits are, what sort of influence you have uh, in all the data. And there's also a new sort of a database submission kind of um, style, uh, a new uh, bit of kit, a bit of software. Uh, that you use over the internet really quick really clean uh, and uh, just gives you the opportunity to make all the edits that you need you have your influence in the game um, if that's something you're interested in there's obviously there's a credit there as well and you know if you are passionate about your football club and you think that they're not represented uh, in the game as well as perhaps they should be you know things aren't quite as accurate then get involved you know on the SI forums there's always a post that says what clubs are available and who need assistant researchers. Um, usually a lot of sort of non-league clubs, uh, especially in North, National League North and South. Um, sorry, it's going to break off for half time. And there's also usually one or two big clubs. I seem to remember Everton went without an assistant researcher for six months and so did Wigan. Uh, so if you are considering getting involved, uh, by all means do. Uh, and I'll be happy to share uh, my experiences with you. Um, there are certain benefits I can't talk about due to non-disclosure agreements and things like that. Uh, but obviously the big one is that you get a free copy of the game uh, to work on. Uh, and, you know, your influence is in there. Not always for the best, I have to say, because, uh, for example, Carl Jameson is in this game as a centre-half when he really should be a left-back. And that's something that I need to change. Uh, in my next submission but they're really supportive really helpful guys uh, over with sports interactive as you can as you can imagine uh, they just want to put out the uh, the best game that they can so do get involved if you if you have the opportunity the inkling the the interest um, it's a great thing to put on your cv as well you know you're essentially kind of scouting these players and rating them um, in a, in a sort of established system uh, from 0 to 20 on, on a lot of things and, and including things that you can't see uh, directly in the game as well. So I can't encourage people enough uh, to get involved as uh, we lead here 2-0 against Salford City. This is, um, I was just about to say, surprised we've not picked up more bookings considering that seems to happen quite a lot. Uh, Jan Tongo there, proving that he is uh, a proper filed player by uh, picking up the caution. And there is the customary Luke Burke uh, yellow card. Well done to him. Uh, we're just going to make a quick change. Uh, and I'm going to remember to pause the game this time. Um, I'm going to bring off Jovan Malcolm, uh, the goal scorer, replacing him with Sirhat Tazdemir, uh, who we've got on loan. Uh, and we're just going to place him as an inside forward, uh, a role that we had some really big success with last season uh, with Mark Yates. Uh, so hopefully Tasdemir can pick up where he left off. Uh, I'm interested to see, you know, Rooney's been sort of not very influential. Even Andrade, um, he's somebody I really like. If we were in the market for a right winger um, when we weren't this season because... Uh, Matty Coslow's done really well and I had my eye on Devon Green from the very start of the game uh, but Andrade would be somebody certainly who I would be interested in um, I think he's a fantastic player getting his opportunity in the Football League here with Salford uh, richly deserved um, big fan of his uh, I remember him at Boreham Wood 
I want to say. And he's just switched him over to the left there as well to see if he can influence things. Uh, they are playing a bit more of a flat 4-1-4-1 four, one, four, one than I thought they would be. I thought they'd be more of a 4-3-3 three, three as we do. But uh, they seem to have withdrawn a little bit uh, compared to the games that I saw. As Montgomery makes a good save, uh, tipping the ball over and maintaining his clean sheet for at least another few seconds. Uh, and that has gone over for a goal kick. Uh, great to see as we build out from the back here. Songo just slowing things down, showing a bit of uh, experience, a bit of nous. Not, not uh, a problem with that. Devon Green in field to Walker. Walker with the effort. And he goes close. He has been an absolute superstar over the past few games. And uh, this will now be our fifth win in succession. Uh, and a lot has come down to uh, Tom Walker and uh, what he's done for us. Uh, he's been magnificent in that advanced playmaker role. Um, I often get told that I should be playing other players there, uh, such as Horton and Cragen. But uh, there is no way I'm changing that one. As Bolton take the lead in the 90th minute through Jamie Mackey. Uh, that uh, has put them, uh, or it's maintained their place at the top of the league. Uh, but Bradford have drawn. Uh, that is good. I'm going to give them a uh, well done. Good lads. You all look delighted. Yeah. Uh, Manchester United go top of the Premier Division. Manchester United, who seem to be linked with every attacking player under the sun at the minute. I saw a list that said Jaden Sancho, Jack Grealish, Donny van der Beek, I think. Is that, who, is that his name? Um, and Raul Jimenez could be on the way to Old Trafford. I mean, I'd be staggered if more than one of those arrive, uh, given their attacking uh, talents that they have in the squad already. You think they've got sort of Fernandez, Marshall, Rashford, and Mason Greenwood, who had a fantastic end of the season. Uh, absolutely no reason to look for any other players there. Uh, and Manchester United are obviously the, bl the blueprint for bringing players through. I think they've got the record of so, so many years of having an academy graduate in their match day squad. Uh, that is sort of, you know, the, the football manager dream, really, to keep that going. And uh, they done absolutely magnificently uh, with giving players the opportunity uh, and also I have to say one of the things that I do read a lot about Manchester United is that they look after their players even when they leave so if even if they know that somebody's leaving they will help them find somewhere uh, in order to play some more football um, and as you've seen you know we, we talked before about James Wilson uh, now being on the books at Salford you know it's no coincidence uh, that he stayed in the game uh, and could have a really uh, a big say for them uh, at various times of the season. Uh, Barnets have slipped down to 23rd. I'm assuming they lost their game, or they crashed to a 3-0 defeat against Oldham. That is not what you want to see, uh, although, obviously, don't have any interest in it, but Barnet are the team that I do, I do uh, keep an eye on, because we're now 21 points clear of them. You know, and that sort of says to me that we've done really well and adapted to Skybet League 2 so far. Uh, certainly compared to the team that was promoted with us. Uh, Salford at now slipper place. They drop down to 18th uh, thanks to uh, Swindon defeating Southend. Uh, there will be, I suspect, a news item telling us. There we go. Five games straight now. A uh, bit of a concern that we're still conceding goals. You know, that's four in that last five games. Uh, but we are scoring an impressive number of goals. Um, and in total, 26 uh, goals in 13 matches. Uh, I wonder if that's uh, what our goal difference is. So our goal difference is plus 13, which is the best in the league. Uh, we've only lost one game uh, for uh, for all of that. Uh, which is the least of anybody. Uh, so, yeah, really pleased uh, with the win over Salford. Um, I expect us to win all our home games, to be honest. I think we're, we're very sort of uh, solid at uh, Mill Farm. 
Next up, and the next episode that we'll do, so episode 37 will be this Leeds under-23 game uh, in the Leasing.com Trophy Northern Group Stage. I think it's one we have to win, because if we lose, that means we've lost two in a row, and that gives the opportunity for Grimsby and Leeds under-23s to sort of take a, a firm hold of the group. Once they get onto six points, that's it, it's game over for us. So the big challenge there will be to get something uh, from Leeds under 23s at Mill Farm. Uh, that will be our next fixture. So uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, do the like, share, subscribe thing that other more successful people talk about. Um, it is very much appreciated. Uh, you sort of being just a, a, a part of this um, journey, which is is very much me sort of learning a lot of the the different techniques with editing and and you know learning how to speak into a microphone properly um without uh, tripping over myself or using the word mm all the time uh, which seems to happen with alarming regularity uh, at the minute so thank you for being uh, part of this and i shall see you next time